Hi, welcome to Just Paint It. I'm your host, Christina Watts, a multimedia artist in Prince George, BC, and today we're going to paint Marnie Hamagami. So Marnie is going to get a beautiful portrait of herself done today, and in our short limited time space, we're going with a Picasso style. So let's get started. Today we're going to start by forming her face, the oval part, with one of my favorite tools, the Molto acrylic paint marker. It is uh, basically paint in a pen. So, they aren't cheap, but they work really well. And I'm looking at Marnie head on. She has a nice structure. Marnie's done modeling and is probably one of the most painted people in Prince George. Um, but she has a beautiful structure. And we're going to start off with an oval. Now, I don't mind if my lines aren't quite equal right now. Just trying to get a form. Now when we're starting to do a Picasso style portrait, the first thing you want to do is get the person directly facing you. And it's okay if they move around because in a Picasso one, their eyes will be up, down, their lips will be lower, they will be centered up here and there. And you want to just sort of follow that. So I have Marnie's face shape and I'll put in a nice long neck. Now, Marnie, if you could sit away from me sideways, I will start with your side feature. So Picasso is really known for breaking up images. Uh, he was an excellent realism painter, but he wanted to get a lot more interesting and that meant to break up these images into more abstract forms. So what I'm doing right now is I'm bringing the line down her forehead area, and the nose is right approximately. The eyes come out midway through the head, the nose comes out quite a bit further. Now the part with the eye is really interesting because he always puts one eye up high and one eye down low, one is bigger, one may be closed or open. So we're going to go along with that put a nice rounded eye, because Marnie has really nice big eyes. Um, one thing you'll notice with Picasso is they don't, they kind of both look directly on, um, not necessarily sideways. So we'll do both eyes kind of directly on. And this one up here will be a little bit different, a little bit up higher. You'll notice that my canvas is already pre-done today. Uh, it was pretty much a red canvas that I textured and um, put some yellow on top. And to distress it, <clears throat> it was just water droplets that I pulled off with a paper towel when it was wet. I just wanted to start with a canvas that uh, wasn't completely white and uh, just had some fun toning it. Now these are pretty rudimentary shapes. Uh, anybody can do this. It's a lot of fun. And all you have to do is this much. And now we'll start moving into our paints. One thing you'll notice with Picasso is he capped this side generally the warm tones, your yellows and your reds. And this side was generally your cool tones, your greens, your blues. And so that's what we're going to start to flush out here. And as it dries, we'll be redefining the shapes with the paint marker, but these rudimentary shapes give us a place to start. On my palette today, I have a variety of colors. I have the yellows, two blues, uh, red and orange. This time I have a green. I don't often use green. And of course, a white and a black. And when you're painting, the number one color or paint you will use is white. So um, buy big quantities of that and it will help you change all these other colors into uh, uh, hundreds of different colors to use. 
So in keeping with this side, we're going to start out by filling in the warm tones over here. Now my paint marker is still a little bit wet and that's good because that gives me an opportunity to shade as well and push with my brush some of that paint that's black out of the way so that my lines are getting moved around for us. So anybody who doesn't know Marnie, Marnie is the general manager at Theatre Northwest and when you're watching those productions out there, um, she's been a big, huge part of that and the marketing and success of that. And she's, uh, like I said, one of the top models that we have for painting in Prince George. We use her often for the artist workshop and they have these really neat drawing sessions where they time them so Marnie will sit in a position for one minute only and the artists do a quick loosen up draw and then they move to two minutes and it sort of gets more elaborate and elaborate with more time allotted. And we don't often get a chance to get a model to sit for very long because we all have very busy lives so it's um, really nice that Marnie can come and do this fun one with us today and uh, we can Picasso her up. So I'm going to give this side a little bit of time to dry so that I can start sort of adding layers and layers to this. And I'm going to move over to my blue side over here. I can't imagine what the artists back in the day were, were up to and it, it, sometimes you get to experience a little bit of that when you're painting like they did. Um, how they may have looked at the world, how they may have rebelled in some ways against some traditions and you see that a lot in modern <clears throat> pieces of post, post impressionism and impressionism were really interesting and they started off in Paris and it pushed art in, from realism into uh, abstracts, cubisms, foism, so many different areas because they simply dared to be different and um, they believed it was more interesting and they broke art up for the world. move more in. You'll notice that I'm sort of cleaning my brush off in between. I'm just wiping my brush on a paper towel today. And that will do for now. And all I'm doing really here is blocking in some shapes with colors. So I'm really not thinking about, you know, how this is going to look right now. I'm just adding colors in here to give it some different lines which I'll accentuate with the black again later on. And everything with art, especially abstract, is all about breaking up your lines, making them different. And there will be a few signature things that we'll do to this one to make it more Marnie. Um, clearly this is looking so much like Marnie right now, but we're gonna give it some defining pieces that are gonna add this interest and gonna say, hey, that is Mar Marnie. It's Picasso of Marnie. I'll start moving around the canvas. I'll even start getting into this, a uh, little bit of this background here. Um, and I'm thinking about what's dry, what's not dry, what I can blend, what's not good to blend right now. And it's really hot um, in the studio. So I'm 
trying to go as fast as I can so the paints don't dry right on my palette, which is another variable when it comes to painting. The brush that I'm using mostly today is a Filbert brush. A lot of people um, don't like this brush, but this is the one that I paint the most with. And it is the one that I like to do my trees and my clouds with. And it, and it kind of comes down to sort of how you use your brush. So I'm adding some white just in around your eyes. And I'm not worried if I go outside the lines because I can clean those up later. Just wanted to make sure that these will dry in time for me to do the inside of the eye. in my experience with painting that a lot of people won't put up like a realism portrait in their house unless it's a family member um, or somebody famous but they will put up an interesting abstract portrait Now the lips are going to be interesting because that's sort of a defining part and I will put in more lips here but in order to adjust this piece what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the blue on this side of the lips and the red part on this side of the lips and, and that's just so that those lips will stand right out in this Picasso piece. So we're just carrying through, filling in our spots, warms on one side, cools on the other side and reminiscing about Pablo Picasso. Now, Pablo Picasso was a part of a bunch of other artists in France who um, sort of challenged each other to, to do different things and, um, and, and break out of some of the norms that existed back in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And uh, this sort of tradition sort of carried on and carried art into new places. And we have, you know, they had, they, they struggled with a lot of debates and some of their pieces weren't um, allowed in some of the major museums because they weren't traditional pieces, but they kept on painting them anyways. And uh, they are some of the greatest works of the day. And we're experiencing a little bit of that in today's society, actually. Um, one of the things that we see emerging nowadays is the dawn of digital art. Now a lot of people say if you're not actually painting the piece, is it art? Well these were the great debates that happened back then, you know, if it didn't really look like a person, was it art? Um, and so with the new tools that we have at our disposal these days, what, what is going to change our world for art? Hard to say. Some people like the idea of actually painting and you know it being a live, real experience. And you, you know that somebody has made it. But a digital art also provides that, that vision for people. And with the tools that they have out there, I've been playing with some of them. Some of them are um, really interesting. They, they're making these eye pencils. And if you, uh, if you push them down, they will mimic a pencil, um, the, the strength of a pencil all the way through. So it's really interesting. What will happen in our world next? This is sort of touching a few yellow highlights here and there now. The paint is still quite wet, so these are going to be very transparent and they're sort of mingling with the paint underneath. Um, and that's okay. If you like a solid, solid color, then what you want to do is just go back over dried paint and put more down. Um, depending on the paints you use, they can be either very pigment loaded and, and super opaque, or um, they can be cheap, they can be transparent, which requires you to do a lot more layers. And me, I'm lazy. The more pigments in a paint, 
means that I can either water it down for transparency and still get the same kind of a look. So some of this up here is not going to matter because I am going to fill it in with um, black. But what people don't realize is that the colors underneath in a painting will shine through other colors. And while we don't see it right off of our, um, right from our eyes, they are there, they do exist. And, and the bouncing of that light on the different layers, it's what can really make a piece pop. Now here's something that I've done on purpose. I put red beside a green. Uh, these are two opposite colors. And when you put them side by side, they instantly make each other pop. Here. And we've got greens, blues. Let's see. Nice one on this would be purple. How do we get purple? Now we're going with red and blue. And here's a nice mix. So even when you start off with just primary colors, you can make a lot of different colors. And then there's the specialty colors, which you can you pick up because uh, purple is actually one of the hardest colors to make. A lot of people buy purple and a lot of people will buy green as well. And just remember that these paints will dry darker because they are acrylic. And um, think about that. So adding a tint of white in there after you kind of have your colors a good idea because um, it's going to dry a little differently. Also, because I'm mixing colors of the same palette, any color I put on my, on my painting will be harmonious. In Picasso's pieces, he had a lot of bold colors and then he had some neutrals. So this purple that I'm putting on is quite a bit neutral. And that will kick back your painting. So if you have too much color on your piece and you don't know what's going on, pop a neutral in here and there and it will help you balance out your art. I know I'm going to put red down here and green on the other side. But I am going to just throw in some quick neutrals here just to sort of break up some more shapes. Now I'm going to switch to an angled brush just because it's smaller and I'm starting to go from my bigger shapes into portioning it out into smaller shapes. So. Lips will be comprised of the brightest color and then toned back with the neutral underneath and some pops of white. Now the other side is supposed to be the direct on, so that one will be simply And we will build these layers up to give them some more color, but we're just blocking in some shapes right now. Marnie has nice full lips, and when I'm looking at them, I'm thinking, how much of her face are they taking up? And it looks like this nice broad part, well proportioned to the rest of the face. And they come right off her jawbone. And I'm going to put some blue down below on her lip, where the green is. And I will do the same for the red side too. Put some orange in that. So 
So I've continued breaking up my shapes around here and um, you'll see that I've added some neutrals. Now where I added the neutrals was interesting. I've got um, this sort of matched up with under the eye over here. And I have it, the neutral in three spots on this side and three spots on that side. That's that purpley neutral that we made. Now we're gonna do Marnie's eyes. This is gonna be the piece de la resistance is making this more personal and now we're gonna really make it more Marnie. So she has some big hazel eyes and I've mixed up some green and some orange and some blue to give me, it's, it's looking like a really dark green on here, but when it dries, it's gonna be more of a, more of a brownie green. So I'm going to quickly slide these in here. So I'm not too worried about going over the pupil that I drew in. That was merely a placeholder earlier. And I'm also not too worried about going into the whites, which we will fix up again. Simply because I'm, I really like using my filbert brush. All right, so I'm gonna let the face parts dry, um, do the hair next, using my big pal brush because it's efficient. Um, this side now is going to have the reds in it. Um, because this side's been the cool side for a long time, but if I want her hair to pop, it needs to be red on this side, the yellows, the oranges, and then vice versa on the other side. Triple loading my brush because I am a little lazy. Pile brushes are amazing. They will do most of the work for you. And I know Marnie's hair is black, but we're going to run it down and over, flip it, add some more color on the other side. Cut it in, flip, cut it in, running out of orange, we're gonna put it in here. like that, we have her hair. Right, let's smooth out a few pieces. And add in some yellow. Okay, I'll let this dry a little bit. I'm gonna start moving into my paint marker. and defining some of her features. So just cutting across Marnie's bangs, adding the black in. This, the, the black is really gonna start knocking things back a bit. I'm gonna put it in her hair. I'm leaving some lines showing through, showing the color. One of the features that Marnie has is her, are her bangs. So, um, we have to get those in. It's an easy thing to do to make this a Picasso Marnie. And Marnie does have dark hair, so we are gonna throw in just a few black ringy lings all the way down. And I like that at this point the paint is getting dry, so um, and her bangs go up quite a ways, right past top of her hairline actually. So we're gonna start pushing this black up top I'm moving a lot faster because our paint is really drying out. This is this is totally Marnie now, yes? Mm. It's totally Marnie. Just run that down. Some ringlets. I'm going to take one more look at these lines and see how they are. We're gonna call this one finished. Just throw some. Throw. I'm gonna put some highlights in your hair, just like at the salon. This was a really fun Picasso piece and I can't thank Marnie enough for coming here and posing for us so that I could kind of get some really fun features that are Marnie's features on here. So now we're gonna sign off and call this one finished. Thanks for watching and have an artful day. Mm -hmm.